Hey, my name is Jesus Castello for rubyguides.com and in this video you're going to be learning about the yield keyword and the yield self method. What are they and exactly what are the differences? Okay, before we start, just let me mention very quickly my Ruby book, which you can buy on rubyguides.com if you want to improve your skills and support my work like these videos and the many articles that can, you can find in my site. So the book is called Ruby Deep Dive and it's very appropriate for uh, Developers already went through a very beginner tutorial, like conditionals, variables, and want to learn more, want to take the next steps. Okay? So I think you will like that. So now back to the topic of this video. And it's the yield. Why did I choose yield as the topic of this video? Well, because a lot of people get confused with yield because there are multiple versions of yield and multiple uses of yield, okay? So you can see I have uh, the documentation here. If I type yield, a few things come up. We have this Fiverr yield, this proc yield, this enumerator yielder, yield self, right? Why so many yields? What's the difference? What's going on in here? Well, let's explore this topic. I have a code example right here. And I have a method called times two. And inside this method, I use the yield keyword. Okay, so that's important. Yield, this yield is a keyword. That means that it's part of the language itself. It's part of the language syntax, just like def or class or a few other things that are also part or end. All of these are part of the language itself, right? So that's different from a method. Method can be defined and redefined on different classes. Yield, there is only this yield as a keyword. That's why I mentioned that. Now, what does yield do? Well, yield is related to the topic of blocks. Okay, so if you don't know about blocks, then you won't be able to understand yield. It's very important that you understand blocks as a Ruby developer. Now, how are blocks related to yield? Well, there is a very direct relationship. When I call this method, that's called um, times two, I have to pass a block. Why? Because what yield does is it takes this block and then it runs the code inside the block, right? So if I run this code, you're going to, you're going to see test. Why test? Because the block is doing that, it's printing test. And yield is just running this code. Before yield, look, uh, if I comment out yield, nothing happens, right? So you can see. But if I use yield, then we get the output. So that's what's going on. Yield is like if I take this, whatever is inside the log, and I put it there. Basically, it's the same idea, right? So that's what GL does. It's like kind of a placeholder kind of thing. That's one way to think about it. And GL can also take arguments. And when you call an argument on GL, like this, now this argument will be, we go into this block, okay? 
if I have n for example, then this n will be 1. So that's how it works. And you can dig deeper in my book. In my book, I actually cover yield and blocks and lambdas and procs, all of these topics that are good together. So that's the yield. Uh, how is it used? Well, it's used for methods that take blocks, right? Uh, this also used in Rails. Specifically in Rails, you might have seen this yield like this in the middle of a layout. Like if you go to a new uh, or any pretty much any regular normal Ruby on Rails application, you open the, light, the application layout file and you will find the yield in there with the with this syntax, right? Something like that. What's that? Well, it's the same thing, only that the yield is being replaced by is the contents of your template, right? So this allows to have your layout and then in the middle of the layout, you can have the content and the content can change. So that's yield in Rails. It allows you to create layouts and have the content be different depending on what template you are rendering. So that's another use for yield. So yield in blocks, yield in rails, and then we have yield self, okay? So yield self is completely different. Not only yield self is a method, so it means it's not part of the language syntax, it's a method. Uh, it also has a different use, a different purpose than yield, right? So let's take a look at yield self. Let's say that I defined um, some block like this uh, times two. Actually, it is a lambda, and we know because this syntax and it's going to take one argument and inside we're going to do n times two. Use as an example. So now if I take the number one, I can do yield self times two. Okay, I have a little typo there. Now what happens when I run this code, we get if I print the output, we get two, right? So that's yield self. What yield self does, it's going to pass the object as an argument to this lambda, okay? So what that means is that this like calling this, something like this, one, right? We can compare this and we can see they do the same thing. So why then bother using gel self at all? Well, let's say that we want to do this again. We want to take the output of this um, operation, of this expression, and we want to call times two again on this output. How can we do that? Well, if we try to do this, that's not gonna work. That's, a, that's an error, right? That's an error. So that doesn't work. So what else we can do? We can do this, we can do times two, then uh, we can do times, we can nest the call. So we can do times two, it's going to be that, right? And that works. 
But as you can see, this kind of a mess doesn't look very nice, right? And if you have to do it again, it's going to look like that. So this where yield self helps because now we can do yield self, yield self again, and it just works. And we can also format it like this if you want it to be easy to read. And it works. And uh, also this times two, it doesn't have to be times two again. It could be times three or something else. So that's yield self. Again, what it does is it passes whatever the current object is, in this case one, and after this it's going to be two. That's why it becomes four at the end. So what's happening is we're calling this with one so it becomes two, then it rolls over, it goes over the next step, it becomes four, then it becomes eight. And that's the result. So that GL self, notice how different this is from actually calling yield within inside the method. And also this doesn't have to be a number, this can be any object actually. We could use A. What happens? Well, we get four A's. Because A goes in, it gets times two, it comes out, and then that AA, so that's AA, becomes the input of the next call. So that becomes A, 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 A. Hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, then uh, you can do two things. First, um, learn more about blocks, procs and lambdas. Learn more about methods in general. Learn more about object-oriented programming. And finally, and also very important, practice. Practice with these examples, come up with your own examples, change them, see what happens as you change the code, right? And also you might want to look for even more examples, create your own examples and see if they, if they work. And by the way, yield self can be combined with other methods. So in here we could do Upcase, for example, and it works, right? So I hope that helped uh, clarify things a bit. Uh, if you like this video, please click the like button for me so I know that you like it. And if you want to keep learning, watch more of my videos now, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet, and visit my website, rubyguides.com, rubyguides.com. Thanks a lot for watching. I will see you in the next video.